Welcome friends, staff, colleagues, family members to our worship service for the month of June. I'd like to thank you and also praise you Jesus for allowing us to have this gathering during, during Wednesdays each month. Amen. I'd like to uh, have Reverend Mona Magruder come up here and give us the opening prayer. Let us pray. O oh, gracious God. We gather here to praise you and to give you thanks for your unfailing love and faithfulness, Lord, shown clearly through your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us grace to worship you in spirit and in the truth. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, 
Open our eyes to recognize you here among us. Give us courage to step out on faith to meet you, Lord, and confidence to follow you where you lead. We thank you, Lord, for this monthly worship service, and we're proud to have Chaplain Sandra Gray share the blessings of the word this afternoon. In your name we pray, amen. Today's scripture, James 1, verses 2 through 6. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives, you, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. Amen. 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 Reverend Sandra Trice Gray needs no introduction to us. Our chaplain, our beloved chaplain, we're so pleased to hear her message. We were chatting the other day, and uh, a couple weeks ago now, and she said, well, I haven't given a message to the church family here for a little time, so it's her time today, yes. <laughs> as we know. But, you know, just to, I, I need to tell you a couple things about Sandra. And they're these. We're going to be building a chapel next door in the garage starting this summer. We're going to be, look around you at this beautiful place of worship, this altar, this cross, the sacraments, the Bible, these banners. They're gifts from the Holy Spirit delivered by our chaplain. 31 programs. Most, if not all, now have a ministry program because of the Holy Spirit. We give thanks to God. But because of Sandra's insistence, her love for us, and her love for the Lord. Yes. Amen. Praise God for that. What an incredible disciple we have in our midst, one that continues to give gifts to us all. I'm grateful to have met Sandra myself um, over the last two years. Um, I'm honored. It's with great pleasure. Um, she's given me that boldness to step out on my faith and, and challenge things that I wouldn't have done. Um, like Russ said, it's, it's incredible. You know, she talk about the light all the time. I dare you not see it when you see her. Um, she carries it with her everywhere she go. We sit and talk for hours in Duke Divinity, just sitting and talking about some of this. And I'm like, she crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the truth is, faith without works is dead. Amen. Amen. And she have the faith to do the stuff that people say is impossible. Yeah. So I love her for that. She's been, she's been more than a teacher for me. She's been somebody that advocate some of the things that I struggle with, and she helps me press on. So I'm honored to have been in her presence. I thank you, Sandra. Joy, joy, God's great joy, 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 down in my soul. See, beautiful, soul-saving joy, oh, joy, joy in my soul, joy. Joy, God's great joy, 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 down in my soul. Sweet, beautiful, soul-saving joy. Oh, joy, joy in my soul. Let us pray. Gracious Father, great God, God of all there is, the great I am, we pause in this moment acknowledging your presence in us, our presence in you, and the fact that you and we are inseparable. 
So as we listen to the message this evening, this afternoon, I pray that each and every person will embrace what resonates with their spirit and take it forward on their personal journey of joy with you. In the name of God, amen. Amen. Well, it's a journey of joy. And some of you saying, how can you walk around with joy given all the challenges we're facing in this world? We have terrorist attacks. We have people using and stealing from senior citizens. We have children being abused. We have families in economic crises. Now, you could make that list go on and on and on and on and on, but I'm not going to go down that road because I want to remind you that we are on a journey of joy with God. And that's the major focus. It doesn't mean that we don't pay attention to what's happening in the world. We do. But remember, it's time to remember that we're on a journey of joy with God. Just hearing the word joy makes us smile. When I looked at you, when we said joy, I saw so many people with smiles on their faces. And that's who we are. We're the joy. And it's the only joy that people can see that comes from God. So that is our job. As usual, most of the information you're going to hear today is about the obvious. But it's when we don't pay attention to the obvious, we miss out. And today, you'll miss out on your personal journey to joy if you don't pay attention to the obvious. As we listened to Keith Solo, I dare say every soul in this place was filled with joy. It was incredible, moving, soul-stirring. But we each can embrace the first line of the song. Life and favor are upon me. You don't know my story. I'm grateful I can tell it. Because it proves that God can deliver. Somebody, somebody needs to know my story. What does the word of God tell us about joy? Jim read a scripture that told us that we should count it all joy and to ask in faith. That's the basics. Count everything joy and ask in faith. What else does the word of God tell us about joy? You will show me your path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. And then thou shall make me full of joy with thy continence. A journey to joy. Some of you may be asking, what is joy? Joy is a vital spiritual experience. Get that. Joy is a vital spiritual experience. This experience is emerging from God's grace, our faith, our hope, our gratitude, and our love. We are journeying in experiences with God. We got to remember that. We are journeying in experiences with God. It is joy that is increasing in us. We can't generate it, but we can prepare 
a way for it. We can prepare ourselves in order for joy to grow in us. Isaiah says, make room for joy. During our time together this afternoon, we will focus on three aspects of our journey to joy. The first, it grows as our lives are uncluttered. It grows as our lives are uncluttered. The second, it is merges as we open a way for the glory of God to grow in us. And third, it flourishes in an inseparable relationship with God. Joy grows as our lives are uncluttered and we make time to recognize that we're journeying with God. We must make time to realize the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. Uncluttering our lives means uncluttering our minds. It's that simple, even though it's not simple to do. <laughs> uncluttering our lives means uncluttering our minds and letting go of gossip. Blaming and complaining, negative attitudes, and letting go even of negative people. Let go of rationales that keep us from moving forward. Let go of having no room for forgiveness. Because we can't move forward unless we forgive. Let go of emotional hurts. Let them go. Let go of illnesses and obstacles and distresses. No mean we don't have them. We don't have to dwell on them. Let them go. <laughs> and all those things that we so much love to hate, let it go. These things clutter our lives, clutter our minds, and steal our joy. Hmm. Now, there was a group of men in our church that wanted to sponsor a day so that everybody could come in alignment with God. So they planned this wonderful retreat out in the woods. And... Um, they were just so happy. <laughs> That's a man thing, right? <laughs> but they did invite the women to come. This was a quiet place of solitude where they could be centered, dwell on their inner being, and align with God. Well, I need to let you know that I've engaged in this practice every day since 1979, and it becomes important a little later in this message. But anyway, one of the church members, and you might know it was one of these critical, negative attitude people that we have to love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he asked him, what are we going to do on this day? Why is it so important that we take a whole day to do it? And the man started explaining, well, last year, and he's showing him pictures, we were on the lake as the sun came up, praying. We were on the lake as the sun went down, praying. We were in the lodge, all the men, we don't know where the women went, but we were in the lodge praying together. And the list went on and on, describing what happened on this spiritual retreat to align with God. The, 
bottom line, he said, is, is a retreat of silence, mostly, and communing with God. The man said, I don't have time for that. You're going to take all day, <laughs> all my day, <laughs> to commune with God? I don't have time to do that. I barely have time to come to church on Sunday mornings for an hour. And you're going to expect me to take a whole day <laughs> to align with God? Well, he showed him the pictures again, and he quoted this scripture. You make known to me the path of life. And in your presence is fullness of joy. And that's what we're about. We're about being in God's presence so that we can be full of joy. Well, no need to say that the man didn't go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but others did go. And they went because they realized joy materializes as we empty our lives of all the stuff and all the activity to spend time with God. Unless we make space and time for the joy of God to emerge in us, there will be no way that joy will grow in us. Remember, Joy is a vital internal spiritual experience emerging from God's grace. My second point. Joy emerges as we open a way for the glory of God to grow in us. That my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Joy is exposure of the glory of God in us. Joy is the exposure of the glory of God in us. Joy opens a way through our own glory so that God's glory can reveal itself. Reveal itself through us. We simply need to let go of our perceived obstacles, so that joy emerges, providing an avenue for the glory of God to grow in us. Remember, I told you in the beginning <coughs> that you don't know my story, mm -hmm. but I am grateful that I can tell it, <laughs> for it proves that God can and does deliver. Yes. As the song Keith played conveys, life and favor are upon me. We expose God's glory by demonstrating our faith. As we do, we realize we find life and receive favor from God. Here's an aspect of my story. Four years ago in January, I found a lump in my breast about the size of a pea. The very next morning, I beelined to the physician. And he told me to go get a mammogram. I went and I got this mammogram. The mammogram came back normal. He said, there's nothing wrong with you. I said, mm-hmm. I listen to the Holy Spirit. I have perfected listening to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and I've been doing it since 1979. The Holy Spirit told me, you've got to take care of this now, and don't take no for an answer. I remembered that God is in me, and I am in God. And God and I are inseparable. For it is in him that I live and move and have my very being. So who else am I going to listen to? 
all the people, all the experts told me I was crazy. I was acting like John. Told me I was crazy. <laughs> so, four months went by. By April, the lump was the size of a quarter. I went back to my doctor and I said, this lump is growing. We've got to do something. He sent me for every test conceivable. Another mammogram, a sonogram, an MRI. And he said, you really should have a biopsy too. I said, I'll do whatever you say, but we're going to take care of this. So I went to the surgeon to get a biopsy. And the surgeon came in. He looked all at all my film lined up on the wall. And he looked at me and he said, I don't see anything. I can't biopsy what I don't see and left. Now, by then, I was really in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and you know these fancy gowns they give you? <laughs> you go, yeah. I wrapped this gown around me, marched down the hall in my bare feet, and went into another surgeon's office and sat down. And he looked at me. He said, what do you want me to do? I said, I want a mastectomy now. And he said, that's rather dramatic, Miss Gray. We have looked at all of your film, and there's nothing in those films that tell us that you need to be so extreme. I said, if you don't do it, I'll find someone who will. In two weeks, I was in surgery. As I was on the table, the surgeon said, show me where you want me to operate. So I put my finger on the spot where he was supposed to cut. <laughs> you know what he did? He made a huge black X <laughs> on that spot. I don't remember anything else because I was out. <laughs> but when I came to, the surgeon came to me and he said, Miss Gray, we found the malignancy under the X. Mm. Now, if I had listened to all the human experts, I wouldn't be standing before you today. But I listened to the Master Doctor Amen. and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And it doesn't mean that I don't use the instruments that he has for me, but I follow his guidance. And at that time, I said, simply said, thank you, God. Thank you for increasing my faith. And thank you for all that you have taught me through this process. And I was grateful for the divine guidance. And I knew that the glory of God was growing through me. I kept telling myself. I do have the faith of a grain of mustard seed and more. And life and favor are indeed upon me. I won't go into any more of that. But if joy is going to emerge in us, we need to make a way by letting go of today's clutter. Things cluttering our mind. You can't listen to God with your mind cluttered. By listening to God's guidance, by having faith of a grain of mustard seed, and one last thing, walking without fear. Fear interrupts the process and interferes with God's work. Remember, Joy is a vital internal spiritual experience emerging from God's grace and our faith. Joy flourishes, my third point. Joy flourishes 
when we enjoy an inseparable relationship with God. Remember, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Thou shall make me full of joy with thy countenance. We must keep measuring our lives by Christ. Remain open to new teachings and be teachable. And be ready for the new revelations of God. God is talking to us all the time, providing new enlightenment. Get to know God and be shaped by God by reading the Bible, praying, meditating, and fellowshipping with other believers. We know the God seed is growing in us when we feel the joy. One last story. It's Serena Williams' journey to joy. Serena's sister died. She was shot. And she, Serena slipped into a very, very, very deep depression. Still challenged by her sister's death, she cut her foot on a shard of uh, glass. The severe cut required surgery and 18 stitches. She was in a cast for over 20 weeks. Serena was in New York undergoing further treatment for her injury when she had to fly back to LA. On her way back to LA, she suffered a pulmonary embolism during the flight. With multiple pulmonary embolisms, these are blood clots blo blocking a major artery feeding the lung. She was not only close to losing her career, but having a stroke and close to death. When she returned, she had to have surgery to remove a hematoma in addition to dealing with these blood clots. The hematoma is the buildup of blood outside the blood vessel. That was created by her blood thinning daily injections. What did Serena do? <coughs> she held on to her faith and her faith grew dramatically. She infused every thought she had with hope. She embraced love. The love of her mother, her family, her friends, and most of all, she embraced the supernatural love of God, which was healing. She gave thanks to God every single day for keeping a shield all around her. She maintained a heart full of gratefulness. She takes time to speak about her challenge to the public. She publicly acknowledges her gratefulness to Jehovah and how thankful she is to be here. She was knocking at death's door. After 12 months, she returns to playing tennis. The first day she steps onto the tennis court, she cries but they were tears of joy. And no, she didn't win the match. <laughs> but by the early weeks of July 2012, Serena was playing in the 2012 Wimbledon. I watched her win one match at a time. And then came the final match, which was extremely tough. But Serena persevered and won. When she won, she dropped her racket on the ground, and then she collapsed on the court. 
that she remembered she had to go and be gracious to her opponent. So she got up and thanked her opponent for an excellent game. But that's not the end of the drama. Serena left the court, ran across the first, and leaped across the first tier, a crowd of people, and into the second tier where her family was and greeted all of them with a huge hug. And then she realized what she had done. So she came back down the steps in a very ladylike manner <laughs> and went on to the court and accepted the Wim Wimbledon 2012 trophy. Well, the last picture that we see of Serena <laughs> was her leaping into the air with her trophy in absolute elation. Our journey to joy requires that we maintain uncluttered lives and uncluttered minds. Second, that we open a way for the glory of God to grow in us. And third, create an inseparable relationship with God. Remember, joy is an internal spiritual experience emerging from God's grace, our faith, our hope, an attitude of gratitude, and our love. The question at this moment is, where are you on your journey? God bless you. As we leave you, we trust you will take time to reflect on your personal journey to joy. Embrace it. And know there is no time that you are without God. For you are in God. God is in you. And you and God are inseparable. For it is in him that we live and move and have our very being. God bless you and go forth with abundance of light and love.